Hey folks, Chad Perkins here for Red Giant, and in this, the ninth tutorial in this series, we're going to look at some tricks to add polish to form. Now we're going to start kind of where we left off in the last tutorial and look at adding depth of field to form. And, you know, we'll talk about what that is. Then we'll look briefly at a few other exciting features, Kaleido Space, World Transform, and Visibility. Again, kind of basically starting off where we left off in the last tutorial, where we have this 3D city made out of particles here. Now we want to create a shallow depth of field. Now depth of field refers to an area in a shot, a video shot, that is in focus. Now by default with After Effects, uh, the camera settings make it so that everything is in focus, but we can change it so that only selective areas are in focus. Now, if we have uh, our form selected here and we go to form, we can adjust the depth of field settings here in the rendering area, but you'll find that in the render mode drop down here that full render plus DOF, and that means uh, depth of field smooth, is on already. So form comes depth of field ready to go. The problem here is with camera settings. So this first example, as, I, as we're in this little first uh, composition here, we're gonna be talking about some After Effects tricks. So this is purely After Effects stuff, but it's going to help you create a better result with form. So what I wanna do uh, uh, is change my camera settings here uh, to get us that shallow depth of field look. And if you're familiar with cinematography, a real world cinematography and After Effects cameras kind of work in a similar way. So one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna change the focal length. If I double click on my camera, you'll see that the focal length is 50 millimeters, which is kind of average-ish. And I actually want a longer focal length in order to create this uh, shallow depth of field look, uh, or rather to increase it, to enhance it. So I want to change this to about 200. I'm just gonna go ahead and type 200 in the focal length, 200 millimeters and click okay. That changes our lens. So it's a telephoto lens, which takes all of these little out of focus areas and brings them up closer to the camera, which uh, enhances this look. I'm gonna open up my camera settings, open up camera options. And obviously one of the first things we do is turn depth of field for our camera from off to on. Now I happen to know because I've gone through this already that the focus distance is 5,455 uh, pixels. That's 5,455 pixels away from the camera lens, which is this tall building with the spire here. Probably can't see that spire super great, but that's kind of what it looks like up close. Now, what I want to do is, uh, this is looking really messy, so I want this building to be in focus and everything on that uh, plane, on the Z axis, I want that to be in focus and everything else to be out of focus. Now, the reason why it's not working, even though form uh, has depth of field turned on and the depth of field is turned on on the camera and the focus instance set, the reason why this isn't working is the same why, reason it wouldn't work in real life is the aperture is set too low. In other words, we need to widen the aperture. This reduces the depth of field. This reduces the amount of the image that's in focus. So I'm going to increase this a lot. Let's see, I'll take this up to 1200 and see what it does. We can see some things out of focus a little bit and we can see that this effect is starting to happen because our building is in focus and these other buildings are, aren't quite as in focus, but actually you could go uh, really ridiculous with this. Let's say 3100. And now we're going to have, well, after it's done uh, rendering here, we're gonna have a lot of these buildings super out of focus, super blurry, and we're going to have just the building uh, in focus here. And again, increasing the aperture doesn't increase the blur amount, it shrinks the area that is in focus. So now we just have this building that's in perfect focus and everything else right in front of it and right behind it is blurry and that's the effect that we want. We could also go in here and adjust other values such as highlight gain if we wanted to increase the the brightness of those areas that are out of focus. Um, I don't wanna do that right now, but I could do that if I wanted to. So that's how to create a depth of field look in, uh, in After Effects. I find that a lot of form students are challenged with this and it's not a problem with form, it's a problem with your After Effects camera settings. Next up, let's look at a feature called Kaleido Space. This is kind of a fun one here. I'm gonna go ahead and select form and you can see that I have just the default settings here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the designer. I'm going to go to the type, the base form type block here, and I'm gonna change the base form type to OBJ model. And then I'm going to click on choose OBJ to pick an OBJ. And I'll go ahead and click Tetra here and click okay. 
Now I'm gonna fiddle with this a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the particle density here to about 250. We're not gonna really see the results just quite yet, but I'm gonna go to size rotation, increase the size to three. And again, we're not seeing this just yet, but we will turn this to three. And then I wanna go over to my fractal field settings and turn this on by uh, increasing the displace value to about 400. And as we do that, you'll see this start to kind of animate in this cool, familiar way now. I'm also going to uh, tone this down a little bit and take uh, by taking flow evolution down to about 10 here. So now we got to kind of get this like slow undulating movement, which is kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply there. And I could go back and fiddle more with the particle size as well as the particle uh, density in the OBJ section here, in the OBJ settings, the particle density, um, to make this band a little bit uh, thicker if I wanted to. But for right now, I'm just gonna go open the particle section, change the color to kind of like this pinkish type color, maybe a little brighter, there we go. And, uh, and that works for me. Now the feature I wanna to talk to you about here is called Kaleidospace. And Kaleidospace basically creates two different planes or just one plane and mirrors what's on the opposite side. So I'm gonna open up Kaleidospace and right now by default, the mirror mode is off. So nothing is getting mirrored. So what I wanna do is let's say I'm gonna mirror this horizontally. What it's gonna do, it's gonna split this in half and it's going to create a horizontal line here, and that's going to make it so that whatever was on the top is duplicated and flipped upside down. So again, here's the original, and then by creating a horizontal mirror, we cut off everything below this midline point and copy it, now it looks like a little fishy, and then if we preview this, we now have this kind of cool symmetrical pattern going on here. I'm just gonna hit home and I'm gonna change this to vertical so we have a vertical divider. So then we have a symmetry on the horizontal axis. And so now as we do that, you can see we have some really beautiful patterns. And this is what Kaleidospace does. It's great for creating, again, really beautiful backgrounds, patterns, textures, and the like. Now I could go back to my base form here and maybe increase the size so it fills more of our background here. And then we could maybe go back and increase the particle density or fiddle with the particle size or what have you, um, but that's good for my liking. Now, a couple settings here. We can also not only miracle, uh, mirror this horizontally and vertically, we could also do this horizontally and vertically at the same time. So again, here's what this looks like off. And actually, let me shrink down the base form just so we can kind of see what's going on here. So we have a very distinct look at the top and then on the sides, get that used to what that looks like. So here's what horizontal looks like. Here's what vertical looks like. And we could do horizontal and vertical at the same time. So it kind of creates quadrants. So we divide it horizontally and vertically. So we have four kind of symmetrical or repeating sections here. And so now as I preview that, again, we have some really beautiful patterns with very little effort or setup time on our part, which is really nice. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. We have two uh, options here for behavior. We have mirror and remove, which is what it does. I'm just gonna change this to horizontal so it's a little bit easier to see. So this is the original pattern. And actually, let's do vertical so we can kind of see what's going on here. So we have a vertical um, mirror. And then, uh, so by default, it's mirroring and remove. So it's copying on one side and then removing it. But we could also mirror everything so that both sides are mirrored and that creates uh, more detailed patterns because instead of um, just creating a mirror and then copying it, it's copying both sides, uh, which uh, gets a little bit more complicated and congested, a lot more going on here. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna take this back to mirror and remove. Another thing to be aware of is the center because it uh, mirrors vertically. Um, and so by default, it kind of splits in the middle, but it doesn't have to do that. We could move this over so that we create some really interesting patterns that way. Or maybe the other way that we um, move it farther away. And that could be interesting as well. Uh, we could also change this horizontally, whatever, move this point wherever we want to. So changes the axis around which the symmetry happens. Kind of a cool little feature.
Now, the next one I want to talk about is World Transform. I've br briefly mentioned this in other tutorials, but I really kind of wanted to give it its own space, its own world if you will, because I think this is a really handy and useful feature. Now, what I'm gonna do is open up the designer again. I'm gonna open up my presets, go to my basics area here, and I'm gonna open up Plasma Thing 3. So we have this awesome shape with all these strings kind of wrapping around this spherical distortion. And this is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply to apply that to my scene. And there we have it. Now, it actually comes in kind of small, fairly small. And let's say I wanted to make that bigger or rotate it or scale it up or do any one of a number of transformations. Now, the downside of this is that um, if we're gonna use the base form to do this, which is typically how a lot of people would do this, first of all, we have a lot of settings because we have to adjust size X, Y, and Z. But now we also have a spherical distortion to worry about. So if we wanted this whole thing to be bigger, we're kind of stuck because we have to increase the size of the spherical distortion. And there's a bunch of things going on here. And we have to increase the size of those and make sure that those are, are all scaling up appropriately as well. And let alone rotating it. For I me, mean, if we're going to rotate this, we're in big trouble because the sphere isn't rotating. Well, and actually this isn't that big of a deal because it's a spherical distortion, which is the same on other sides. But if this was a non-uniform spherical distortion, uh, we'd be in trouble. Now again, there are benefits to this because if I move the position of the base form over and the sphere stays in the same spot and this fractal distortion stays in the same spot, then we can create these really cool effects and patterns where the base form is kind of like wrapping itself and moving around, wrapping around this sphere. So it's really cool to be able to move this. But what if we wanted to be able to move everything at once or scale up everything at once? Well, that's what World Transform is for. I can go over to scale and scale up this whole thing, scale down the whole thing, and everything gets bigger. The particle size, the fractal field, the spherical field, everything gets bigger at once, which is a huge time saver. And not only that, there's just some things that you just can't scale up. Even if you took the time to do it, um, maybe you wouldn't get there by adjusting the other settings and World Transform gets you there, which is, uh, really incredible. The XYZ offset set is refers to the uh, position. So the X position, the Y position, the Z position. And again, I've mentioned this in another tutorial already, but World Transform is so great for compositing form into live action footage. If you have a null with tracking data, you can just use expressions to connect these World Transform properties to the corresponding properties on the null. You know, World Transform is granted not the sexiest of all features. It's not like, you know, on the home page of form, like, check out what it can do, World Transform. It's not that amazing. But this is one of those utilitarian features that will save your neck when you try to use form in the real world. Now, finally, I want to show you visibility. This is another one that's pretty cool. You'll find visibility in its own section down towards the bottom here. And there's really four main features here. There's far, vanish, and start fade and near start fade and vanish. This refers to kind of like a cropping that takes place at the uh, towards the front of the camera and towards the end of the camera. And if you don't have a camera set up, it's just basically towards the closest point from the viewer and the farthest point away from the viewer. And so what we could do is we could fade things in or fade things out at the end automatically, which is really helpful. I'm gonna increase, let's say, this is how I do it. This is uh, my little trick when I'm adjusting the visibility, is I usually start with the vanish properties. So let's say I want to like maybe come out to about here. I want to like um, fade in and then from this point on be set. Well, when I adjust the vanish, it's kind of like a hard cutoff. So as I increase this value, um, there's no gradual transition. So this is where I want um, the fade in to stop and the particles to be solid. So I actually know that 731 is what I want the start fade to be. So I adjust the vanish to get the start fade. If that makes sense. So I'm going to type in 731 here. And now I could reduce the near vanish and I have a fade in to that point. So what this is telling form is that give me 581 pixels of space from the camera. And then after 731 pixels, make sure that they're all solid. So there's a fade, a, a gradual fade between 581 and 731. Let's try that again, but with the far point. So again, I'm gonna start with the vanish property, the far vanish. I wanna cut this off a little earlier so I could reduce this value a lot, keep going, oops, too much. 
And let's say this is where I want the fade out to start happening. It's 1600 pixels away. So now I'll change the start fade value to 1600. And then I'll increase far vanish a little bit until we have a little bit of a smooth fade out there. So between 1600 uh, pixels and 1800 pixels, we're going to have a gradual smooth fall off there. And maybe it increases a little bit more. Um, I'm going to reduce this a little more, 1500. There we go. Now, by default, these are linear fades. If I want to change that, I can change this to smooth fades and we get that type of a result. I'm just going to leave this set to uh, linear for right now. Now, if you've been going through these courses and you know form pretty good, you know about curves. And so you might say, well, why don't you just use an opacity curve? Because this looks just like an opacity curve. An opacity curve on the Z axis, we fade it in, fade it out. And that's fine, except that the difference with visibility is that it's dynamic. This is not just along the Z axis. This is uh, uh, close to you and far away from you. And so if we were to go into, let's say, world transform, which we know about now, and let's say I was to adjust Z rotation. Oops, not Z rotation. I want to try, uh, let's see, Y rotation here. So I adjust that around, and you'll see that no matter where I put my form here, whatever's closest to the camera is going to get the fade. And whatever furthest away from the camera is going to get the fade. So this is a dynamic value that changes based on where you're putting form in the scene. Again, this is very helpful for compositing. So those are the four ways I wanted to cover to add polish in this tutorial. Depth of field, collide of space, world transform, and visibility. Now, one other thing I didn't mention is in the rendering section, open up motion blur and you can actually use motion blur. Again, just like depth of field, it's on by default. So basically, if you wanted to turn motion blur off, you'd want to go to rendering motion blur and then change this to off. Otherwise, it's going to use the composition settings by default. You could also force it to turn on even if your comp settings uh, are not turned on. But by default, again, it's going to use your, uh, your comp settings. And that's how that works. So those are the basic little tools to uh, increase some polish. Next, we're going to look at using audio. It's going to be a fun one. So we hope to see you there. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial. <laughs>